This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Junior doctors and supporters protested outside Health Minister David Clark's office today. Queenstown's impressive new rescue helicopter is one of the most technically advanced in the country. And Lego fans of all ages converged on Invercargill at the weekend for the fifth annual Southland Brick Show. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Simon Anderson. Around 30 striking junior doctors and supporters protested outside Health Minister David Clark's office today. The junior doctors have begun a five-day nationwide strike. They hope will settle their row with district health boards. Braving the cold conditions to have their voices heard. <laughs> Members of the New Zealand Resident Doctors Association taking their fight right to the front door of the Health Minister in Dunedin today. Despite David Clark's office being unattended, Protesters say patient safety is at stake if young doctors are forced to work longer periods. Um, what, what they want to do is, is take control of our, of our contract and the way that we work and how we work and where we work at the same time. I mean, they could put it onto longer shift rosters or different shift rosters that we don't think are safe. Um, but also they can move us around the country, break up our families. Junior doctors walked off the job at 8am this morning at all public hospitals across the country, except for Canterbury, which was excluded because of the recent terror attacks. It's the fifth strike over a failure by both sides to agree on proposed changes to the doctor's employment contract. Here on day one of what's the, the nation's longest doctor strike in history, this is a five-day strike that we're embarking upon, and we're here because we want David Clark to hear us. David Clark's been silent in this matter up until now, and when approached, he's just not taking control of his DHBs. The main sticking point is district health boards want hospital chief executives to have the final say over working arrangements, including rosters, rather than the union head office. The Resident Doctors Association says the health boards are trying to roll back safety roster provisions that they agreed to two years ago. We're trying to keep our current working terms and conditions, we're trying to look after ourselves, keep our hours safe and so that we can keep our patients safe. The strike action is scheduled to end early on Saturday. In Dunedin, the South today. The Mosgiel Memorial RSA has announced it will close its restaurant and bar due to dwindling membership. The move also comes amid tough trading pressures for RSA hospitality operations elsewhere in the country. Chair Peter Amiers says the closure of the hospitality arm is a proactive, managed exit and not a receivership or liquidation situation. He says the move reflects higher operating costs and tougher trading conditions, rendering the club's commercial operation unsustainable. The restaurant is set to close on the 11th of May, while the bar will permanently close at the end of June. Queenstown's new rescue helicopter, one of the most technically advanced in the country, is impressive even for those with limited aeronautical knowledge. But it's the skill, grit and gusto of the pilots and paramedics that are key to saving those lost, injured and at risk in the dangerous alpine environment. Just another day at the office for Jody Burton and the team of pilots and paramedics in charge of Queenstown's new rescue helicopter. She's one of four paramedics crewing Queenstown's first dedicated rescue helicopter service after government reforms made it possible. In general, the Queenstown area is, or well, the whole of the Southern Lakes District is getting busier, more people visiting. Uh, there are more car accidents, there's more people going into the hills and getting lost or in trouble, um, more medical events. So. Yeah, it is busy and I, I think it's going to continue to uh, stay that way. At just 36, Burton has a nursing degree, a paramedic degree and 10 years experience charging the front line in emergency departments and ambulance call-outs. She's now doing postgraduate studies to become an intensive care paramedic, a qualification the other crew members also have under their belts. Apart from myself, the other three guys are all intensive care paramedics, so at the highest level, uh, some of them are RSI trained, which is means that they can provide um, care that not many people in New Zealand can. In their first six months of operation, the crews responded to nearly 250 calls for help. It's almost two call-outs a day, meaning plenty of flying time for the pilots. Our pilots, we've got three really experienced uh, pilots from the Queenstown area, and so they know the mountains around here, and uh, it's just great to know that we're going out with people that 
are at the top of their game. Like most healthcare services in New Zealand, funding shortfalls remain a constant challenge. Partially funded by the government and also through two community trusts, the service also relies on community donations. In Queenstown, the South today. Two French nationals were expected to appear in Queenstown District Court today after being found with around $50,000 worth of cannabis in their car in Queenstown early yesterday. Police say a member of the public called them to report a vehicle in the resort with a distinct smell of cannabis coming from it. Police found nearly two and a half kilograms of cannabis, of cannabis bagged up into one ounce bags. The men, aged 27 and 23, have appeared in Queenstown District Court. Toddlers, octogenarians and all ages in between converged on Invercargill at the weekend to see the creative Lego displays of the 5th annual Southland Brick Show. There were queues outside Stadium Southland as the show opened, with many eager to see the displays by members of the Lego Users Group South. Seriously bricking it! Star Wars, the Taj Mahal, London Bridge and railway yards are alongside roller coasters and aeroplanes, much of which has been built by members of Lego Users Group South. Group Secretary Gavin Evans says attendance at the show is really stacking up. Several thousand people, I haven't got an exact number as yet, but really, really happy and the crowd seem happy with it too. The exhibitors have certainly given good feedback from the crowd. There are play pits for thousands and thousands of Lego pieces, as well as Lego building races. Evans says the number of people through the door has built up from previous years. And putting the displays together takes a massive amount of construction. Today the room was completely empty. 14 hours later we left at 10 o'clock last night to a room that was as the public saw it this morning pretty much. The youngest exhibitor is 7 years old and the oldest has recently celebrated his 80th birthday. Many people are pleased with the event, some have their favourites, while others are enjoying building all sorts of items. Um, the Lego train and the airplane. Oh, it's absolutely amazing, the designs and, and just the people are so creative, I love it. Okay, so we've kind of been building a city until the pirate ships came and kind of mixed the whole thing up into a big blob. Gavin Evans says exhibitors came from as far away as Wellington and Bluff for the event, which he describes as the biggest on their radar. The two-day show finished yesterday. In Invercargill, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, a solar van in Wanaka catches a light and we have discussion on the effect new anti-terror measures might have on free speech. Every Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. At Green Island Medical Centre, we are committed in caring for our future and present generations. We know as a young person, coming to the doctors can be quite daunting. Our highly skilled doctors and nurses will make your experience one where you will leave with a smile. Your health is very important to us. say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. At the Hard to Find Bookshop we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent and where viable we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. 
Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 606 for all your pain relief. Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Mate, I'm thinking about getting a new ute. No my honor. welcome back. The battery of a van appears to be the cause of a fire that ignited at a Wanaka property at a Wanaka property, sorry, this morning. The Wanaka solar van caught a light moments after arriving at Tortora Terrace property after driver Stacy Cowan started smelling smoke as she pulled in. She says she saw smoke coming out of the front seat, which is where the battery is. Two fire engines attended the scene and closed the street for half an hour as they worked to extinguish the flames. The van was gutted and small explosions could be heard, which she attributed to air canisters stored in the back of the van. International relations expert Professor Robert Patman says Jacinda Ardern's plan to work with France to rein in the internet is not an attack on freedom of speech. The New Zealand Prime Minister has announced a joint initiative with French President Emmanuel Macron to tackle terrorism and violence on social media. ODT Features writer Bruce Munro and Professor Patman discuss the topic in the latest edition of Global Insight. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern continues to set the global agenda following the Christchurch mosque shootings. Now she has announced that New Zealand and France will join forces to tackle terrorism and violence on social media. Welcome Robert. Morning Bruce. This is certainly a step onto the middle of the world stage for Ardern. Mm. What went on behind the scenes that led to this joint initiative? I think um, this initiative actually comes, I, I think there's long term causes and short term causes. I think the long term causes is that since uh, Jacinda Ardern has been Prime Minister she's been having extensive discussions with other foreign leaders and there's been deep concern both uh, in Europe and uh, in the United States about the rise of the right and particularly the extreme language they're using as well as of course the extreme language being used by pro-Islamist groups and um, I think that's the long-term concern I think the short term of course the terrible atrocity at Christchurch and the fact that the chief perpetrator used GoPro technology on his head and had the event live streamed and of course the government's been scrambling since the Christchurch atrocity on the 15th of March to try to get major high-tech companies like Facebook to move against uh, such uh, re the recording of that appalling event. I think this is these combination of long-term and short-term factors uh, have brought it into sharp focus that something must be done and I think from the government's point of view they they believe it's an obligation to the victims and their families to try to re re prevent a situation where these sort of ideas of hatred can be circulating and can lead to such uh, uh, atrocities that we saw in Christchurch, for example. So there is a plan for a meeting in May. Mm. What is the plan? Well, uh, France is chairing the G7 meeting, which is one of the reasons I think why New Zealand has partnered with France. President Macron is chairing a meeting of the uh, G7 uh, digital ministers, as they're called. And so this was an ideal opportunity to key in to something that's already in the works and uh, table this initiative. And I think that, uh, you know, France and New Zealand working together through the G7. The other thing here is, is that many of the large high-tech companies like Facebook have been relatively indifferent to the individual appeals by countries. Nine European countries have appealed to Facebook to rein in some of this hate language. 
and they've been unresponsive. But they will take note of the G7 group, which includes some of the most prominent countries in the world. Could some sort of agreement actually effectively make any change, make a difference? I think what Jacinda Ardern is seeking is not to curb freedom of expression, but to actually put some limits on the sort of a Wild West bandit country, which the internet is in the moment. You're allowed to get away with things on the internet that you wouldn't get away with if you publicly spoke within a society like New Zealand. And I think there's an attempt to extend domestic uh, sort of regulation you find in many liberal democracies into the international arena. Could such an agreement actually have some dangers with it, though, that we need to be aware of? I think uh, there, there are some. I mean, let's be quite clear. Several countries like China already regulate the internet and other authoritarian states. I don't think that is the intention. One of the disturbing things for me is the number of senior politicians in North America and elsewhere who've been using terms like enemy, they've been castigating, I mean President Trump for example spoke about the media as the enemy of the people. Uh, this is, that language may seem innocuous to many people but seen through someone who, who has hired ideological views or white supremacist views it, it could be uh, a motivator. Uh, language like um, traitor, appeasement, surrender, all these terms can be quite explosive. Do we need an internationally agreed set of values or how do we make this work? I think what we're looking for here is an agreement on minimal standards for freedom of expression on the internet and uh, we're not seeking, I, I, don't think there, I don't think the intention is to rein in people's ability to express themselves but to make sure that when they do they're not using a language of hatred and violence and in an unsubstantiated way that is not, it is not factually based. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Catch us next time on Global Insight. A bien tout. After the break on the South Today, we check out this year's Aritown Autumn Festival, as well as preparations for this year's edition of the Otago University Capping Show. the hard to find bookshop we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent and where viable we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell contact us. The Green Island Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We often manage my health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754. Autumn is here and it's too late to sow seed. But don't despair, Ready Lawn is the answer to all your garden woes. Call Ready Lawn today on 027 22 88190. Every Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. Most of us have spots on our skin. That's quite normal. Finding skin cancer as early as possible is key to successful treatment. Book in for a free check of one to two moles or a comprehensive full body check with the Mole Doctor in Waverley. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. Ricky here from Beds R Us Dunedin, your local sleep specialists. Come in and try our huge touchscreen sleep selector, taking the hard work out of choosing the right bed for you. See you here. Oh, help! Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician, for structural, muscular, emotional body work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief.
every season. We're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Thanks for staying with us. Organisers say the crowds at this year's Airtown Autumn Festival were the largest yet. Thousands of people lined Buckingham Street and Centennial Avenue to take in the sights of this year's parade, led by two-tone choirs and followed by the Southern Lakes Highland Pipe Band. The parade including the parade including the Buckingham Bells, the Arrow Miners Band, and hundreds of children took almost an hour to walk the parade route. The 35th annual festival drew to a close yesterday. Highlights included the sold out Pie, Pint and Pinot Festival and the New Zealand Gold Panning Championships. Otago University students are set to take on the classic fantasy quest Lord of the Rings in their 125th capping show. But exactly how they'll interpret the twists and turns of the story of Frodo's journey to Mount Doom is being left a surprise. Lord of the Degrees is being described as an epic pursuit in the balance of grades and beer pong. Some of the cast decided to rehearse the show at St Clair Beach yesterday. The show is set in modern day New Zealand and will include regular capping show features, the Sextet and Sexytet, as well as the Selwyn Ballet. The show opens on the 15th of May and is being held over eight nights in the Teachers College Auditorium. A Queenstown rocker is hoping to hit the high note, is hoping to hit the right note in an international drumming competition. A 34-year-old Patrick Brooks is one of just a handful of Kiwis entered in the Shore Drum Contest, a search to find the world's best hidden drumming talent. He may not be a professional muso just yet, but Queenstown's Patrick Brooks is no rookie either. I've been drumming well, since I was, a, I was a kid, so I think since five, I learnt you know, the pots and pans, uh, mum's kitchen utensils just banging away. He got his first drum kit at age 10 and has been drumming on and off ever since, including stints with several bands in the resort. I just love the sound of, of different tones of the drums, cymbals. Um, yeah, I just love um, the groove, it's the, the feel, it's, it's, what, it's, what, it's what I like about playing the drums. It's that passion that's seen him enter an international competition to find the world's best hidden drumming talent, the Sure Drumming Contest. I added a quick video of myself and sent it away and yeah, Fingers, fingers crossed I get the, the votes I want or need and Queenstown support and yeah, pretty much um, hopefully go from there. But just one drummer from each country will progress to the next stage. The opportunity or our opportunity to, to shine really, to um, let the world know, you know, there's, there's just these low key drummers around that, um, yeah, that, that have the capability to Carry on. The grand prize winner will receive a five day trip to London plus sure gear valued at 5,000 US dollars in Queenstown, the South today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. Around 30 striking junior doctors and supporters protested outside Health Minister David Clark's office today. Queenstown's new rescue helicopter, one of the most technically advanced in the country, is impressive even for those with limited aeronautical knowledge. And to toddlers, octogenarians and all ages in between converged on Invercargill at the weekend to see the creative Lego displays of the 5th annual Southland Brick Show. And to now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, welcome Philip.
is uh, more about the muscular is a closing the wrist on the bar. Mm. A lovely reflective picture from Stephen Jackery to, to Grace, probably the front page tomorrow, depending on what else happens tonight. We'll, we'll, we'll see on that. Important story about the plans for the Queenstown Lakes District Council for Wanaka Airport. Right. Uh, that's a, a matter of much contention up there, mm. and even more in Queenstown. Travel features on Seoul, capital of South Korea, and on Florida's Disneyland. In Dunedin, there's uh, some more uh, tweaking and changing of parking, some more parks becoming paid parks. Okay. And um, in an uh, interesting story about the names of, uh, how, how do you spell the name of North East Valley and Pine Hill, and uh, where that's all going. And in sport, um, Adam Thompson, the former a very successful Highlander, returning to rugby at age 37 after serious injury. Wow. Um, the news on the uh, who's going to lead Otago cricket and coaching for the next two years, and a boost for Challenge Wanaka, the uh, multi-sport race. Very good, lost in the paper then. Indeed. Thanks a lot, Philip. And time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with the southern view. Onlookers watching a protest below their flat. Looking at the situation, a west to southwesterly airstream blows over southern districts for a few days as an anticyclone develops in the Tasman Sea before moving on to the country later in the week. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect clear skies and 16 degree highs. Across to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim, you are also in for a sunny day with a slightly warmer high of 17. In Canterbury, you are in for a few clouds, planned for a high of 14 degrees in Kaikoura, Christchurch and Ashburton. In the southern towns, plan for fresh westerlies and the chance of showers right across the region. Balclutha, Catlins, Lumsden and Gore should all reach 12 degrees. Heading westwards to the central lakes, moderate westerlies and mostly fine weather are the driving conditions for this region. Wanaka and Alexandra should reach 14 degrees, Queenstown should be 1 degree cooler on 13, while Teano, you're looking at a high of 11 with a strong chance of showers. Up to the northern towns, Timaru and Oamaru, you have light winds and are otherwise fine on 13 degrees. Similar in Twizel and Omarama, where you are in for moderate westerlies and clear skies with 14 for you both. In Dunedin, mostly cloudy tonight with an overnight low of 5. Fine tomorrow with long sunny periods in the morning, but cloud increasing in the afternoon, looking at a high of 13 and a low of 8. Mostly fine and sunny on Wednesday, with northeasterlies developing, milder temperatures, and a high of 16 and a low of 9 degrees. Heading to Invercargill. Cloudy tonight with decreasing southwesterlies and an overnight low of 5. Cloudy tomorrow with showers during the morning, but clearing weather during the afternoon with fresh to strong gusty westerlies, with fresh to strong gusty westerly winds. Planned for a 12 degree high and a low of 6. Fine with sunny periods and some cloud on Wednesday, milder with moderate westerlies, a high of 15 and an overnight low of 7. And that's the news this Monday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Have a great evening. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.